Great. Hello, everybody. It's Stacey Chalemi from The Advisor, and I'm back again. And today we have an amazing individual. He is an author, and he is a porn and sex recovery coach. He is part of our podcast community, and he has his own podcast on our channel. So check it out. He is an amazing person, and he has done some amazing episodes. So I really encourage you to listen to them. And he's here today to talk about a new identity, you know, the figuring out, you know, who you are and looking at yourself in, in a different way. And he's going to talk more about that now. So Eric, I'm so glad you're on the show today. I'm so glad to see you again today. You are just an amazing individual and, you know, tell everybody a little about yourself and tell us about identity change and what you mean by that. First, I just got to say, I'm feeling really giddy today. Very giddy. <laughs> silly so i might be a little silly today and uh you this is audio but i have in front of me a sculpture from an amazing artist named bobby carlisle she created this amazing bronze sculpture called the self-made man yes she also made one called the self-made woman the self-made man was so successful that she made the self-made woman. And anyway, it shows a man who has a big hammer and he's like in, he's, his body is in this stone and he is literally chiseling himself out of the stone. He's, he's carving himself. He's chiseling himself out of this stone. And it's an amazing, look it up online. It's so beautiful. And he's, but I, what I like what the artist says about him, that he's not just carving or chiseling his body, he's carving his character. He's chiseling his future. And mm -hmm. so this is a lot more than just the physical body. And when I was deep in my porn and, porn and sex addiction, I went to all these recovery meetings and they have you say, hi, my name's Eric. I'm a sexaholic. It's been about five days since I acted out the porn. And this is the kind of, I know, and I'm, I'm powerless over porn. And it's, this is what I view all the time, whatever you say, some of the worst things that you've ever done. And you say it over and over. And, and I did this for many, 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 many years. And I actually got worse. And so uh, I, I said this on the last podcast. So I was, recap that one day I was making a login and password screen name for this app to help break addictions. And just on a whim, I thought I'm going to make my login is powerful. Eric. <laughs> so that's the day that powerless Eric died and powerful Eric was born. And little did I know that that little change would change the whole trajectory of my entire life and countless others. And, um, so like I'm holding and looking at, at this, this, this statue right now, the way you see yourself is incredibly important. Like so important. Your, your identity, the way you see yourself is incredibly important. So after I started calling myself powerful, Eric, no, I didn't go and introduce myself as that. But when I'm, <laughs> I used to brush the teeth of a sex and porn addict. Now I brush the teeth of powerful Eric. And yeah. so that change, then I started to heal and grow. And no, I wasn't perfect by any means, but that's then when I really started to start having some self-confidence. You right. know, it's, it's hard to be self-confident when I'm going to a 12-step meeting every day saying, I'm a sexaholic or I'm an alcoholic. I've been to them all. I've, well, I, I've been to a lot of them. And yeah. uh, just this affirm affirmation every day. I'm a sexaholic. I'm a sexaholic. I'm an alcoholic. It just over and over and over and over. And then saying, you know, I'm powerless. I'm powerless. I'm powerless. And, and by the way, you know, th their own literature says that we were powerless, but they interpret it as we are powerless. And so anyway, um, so that was a crucial day. And it doesn't matter if you're addicted to anything or not. Like this is important the way you see yourself. And, and I'm picking up where we left off 
on the last podcast, I talked about when, if you are considering getting into music, for example, like maybe a guitar, like guitar, um, you know, like you, and maybe, you know, somebody that is, that is a musician or a guitar player. Well, mm-hmm. really, all you have to do in yourself is say, you know what? I'm going to be a guitar player. You know, you may be a really awful one. I'm not saying you're going to be great, but yeah. you just say, say, I'm a guitar player. And you go out and you get a t- guitar, you start playing the guitar, play, learning to play the guitar. Then you, you're a musician and maybe you start making up your own songs or whatever. Then you're a musician. Like that's all it takes. Like you decided it's not your mother, your father, the teacher at school that thought you were really good at, at whatever. It's whatever right. you choose. And so on that day, I decided, you know what? I'm not saying I'm powerless over addiction anymore. I am now powerful Eric. And, uh, and I discovered like, this was totally by accident. I knew nothing about identity change. And I come to realize there's a whole huge thing in psychology of identity, identity change. And uh, Anthony Robbins was asked in an interview, what is the number one tool for change? And this, you don't know, this man has helped millions of people. And he says, the number one tool is identity, identity change. That's it. Right. And so if you are looking to make not just small changes in your life, uh, if, you're whether, if you're wanting to start a business, to become a musician, to overcome an addiction, like this is a great way to do it. It's not the only way, but it's kind of like the fast track, really. It kind of like bypasses a lot of stuff because, yeah. um, you know, we all have, Every human being on the planet has baggage, even if they had the most perfect childhood ever. There's right. always some little trauma, something. And identity change is kind of like a, a how to round it, you know, because yeah. then by by saying like, I'm powerful, Eric, now, I can look at my past and reframe the stories that I used to tell myself and right. can look at them from a different perspective. That's, you know, and that's so important, you know, you know, you have to have a, a ch- if you want to better yourself, if you want to improve yourself, if you want to elevate to different levels, if you want to make yourself a better person, you really have to go into your mindset and you have to change, you have to envision who you want to be and you have to set the goals high. And a lot of times people don't set the goals high. When I, I when I say set the goals high, you got to put that bar really high up and you got to, you got to imagine who's the ultimate person who I want to be, you know, and you really, that's who you have to strive for. And that's the, you know, and once you start, you start thinking about that identity, that new person that you want to become, you are going to start, as long as you start putting the effort into it and you start, you know, start making little tweaks and changes. I think eventually you're going to start seeing a lot of changes more than you anticipated. And people around you are going to see those changes too. And before you know it, you know, you will hit that bar, you know, you eventually will hit that bar. It's it's who we perceive ourselves, I feel like. What do you think? Absolutely. Yes. It's who we perceive ourselves as. And the, the, the big challenge is though, is that like most of the guys, when I first start coaching them, and this was including myself, would one of their affirmation, not affirmation so, so much to say, but like their, their view is like, I'm a piece of shit. Yes. And it's like, it's hard to do great things in the world if you think you're a piece of shit. Exactly. So, so there's a lot of work that needs to be done 100%. Uh, before I st- introduce a client to that identity change stuff because we got to yeah. clean the muck. You know, we got we do have to go into the past and we do have to look at traumas. We do have to, uh, I use... Uh, EFT, the emotional freedom technique is one of the things I use to overcome those things. Because it used to always frustrate me so much because I would go into these different programs and then we would just talk about and talk and talk about like, how do I, how do I get over this stuff? And, right. and so, uh, to, and a, to enable that identity change to happen, you do 
it's helpful to be able to um, resolve some of those those traumas. You can do it without it, um, but it's definitely very, very helpful if you can. And like I said about just reframing the whatever that incident was that happened. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, what, it's funny that I'm laughing about it now because this was not funny like at all. When I was a little kid, um, I was probably, I'm guessing, maybe around four years old, maybe three, probably three-ish, one of my earliest memories. In the bathroom, we had plastic Dixie cups to drink water out of. And right. then a rim around the edge. And uh, I decided, I wonder what would happen if I put three Dixie cups in the, the toilet. I want to see them swirl and what would happen. Well, what happened is they got lodged in the pipe. And my dad had to literally take the whole toilet off. It was a big deal. And to say that I was in trouble, to say the least, I, I was severely uh, reprimanded for that. And it was a trauma for sure. And so one of the thing, one of the type of works that I have to do or I had to do with myself and, and clients is address that trauma to get the severity. Like when I tapped on it, emotional freedom technique, I cried like it just happened. Like I'm a full grown adult and I'm yeah. talking about something that happened when I was three years old. Oh yeah. And um, so you tapped on it to bring the severity down and then you change your perspective, the story on it. And um, so there, you know, it can be easier said than done, I guess is what I'm saying. Identity change. You definitely need somebody to help you do it for sure. Like, I mean, 100%. Um, but you can start yourself and just, like I said, like decide what you want to be, where you want to go. So. But I do agree with you. I, I think you really have to go back to the core, you know, and because, uh, you know, even for me, when I went back to my childhood years and I went back to, you know, when I when I was trying to overcome issues and obstacles in my life, you know, I went back into my childhood years and I, I you know, I did, you know, group therapy and, and talked about issues and things that happened, you know, in my life that caused traumatic events. And I didn't even realize how traumatic they were until I started talking about them. And it does, it brings a lot of emotion. It brings a lot of hurt. And it's really hard, even when you do one-on-one -on -one therapy and you talk about issues that occurred in your life, you know, and sometimes you don't even realize how certain issues, how big of a role, how traumatic they were in your life and how they held you back until you start talking about them. Especially, you know, there are a lot of times, there are a lot of repressed emotions we have because we repress them. They're still there. But, you know, you build up and you build up and you build up. And what happens to a lot of people is that they build up so much that they become emotionalist and they then they don't even know how they feel anymore. They just walk around and they have no emotion and or they just they tap into the anger part and they they're just, you know, always angry, always unhappy, you know, and until you go into that and into, back into your core roots and you go into the traumatic events in your life and you really, you know, talk about them and get them out of your system and, and, and share how it really made you feel or think about how it really made you feel and identify with those emotions and identify with those situations. I think that's when the healing starts and it's a painful process. It's not an easy process. No, and, it's not but when, <laughs> no, once you get over the hump, I think the rainbow is at the end, you know, but to get there is not an easy process, but mm -hmm. if you're able to do it, I think the rewards are reaping high for you because Absolutely. you do, I think. Absolutely. And you know, I can't help, I'm going to get into a weird area because we were talking before we got on this, on the podcast. Um, there's a show called the ghost inside my child. <laughs> and it's about kids who have re reincarnation memories. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm going to lose some of you here. I'm, I'm just, this is a thought that I had. <laughs> uh, some of these kids, their traumas were so severe from their last incarnation. Do you believe that? That mm -hmm. literally brought it into this 
they were literally having flashes. And I think of the, this one episode, this kid thought he was a World War II pilot. And this was a little kid that knew like nothing of World War II and all this stuff. And uh, he has this, these memories of him crashing uh, as a pilot and all this stuff. And yeah. so then in this episode, they meet with someone and they basically kind of help him to overcome that trauma. And then, then he kind of for, forgot about it and he was good. Mm -hmm. So like, this could be trauma that goes way back. And, you know, I, I have never had this on a podcast and I'm saying this now, this is so weird. Like, this is so weird. You can judge me. That's fine. Go ahead. I mean, I thought that I had to have been molested as a child because of the things that I got into. But right. I can tell you, like, you know, there's suppressed memories, and I'm very aware of that. But I can tell you this is not a suppressed memory. Mm -hmm. I have a spirit, a person, a spiritual advisor, a person I work with. Her name's Rebecca Baines. She was raised, her father was in a satanic cult, and they used her. Wow. And, uh, so, so she was able to not only overcome that, but now helps other people with, overcome their traumas. And she helped yeah. me. And one of the things that came up was that I think that in a past life that I was molested because I know it wasn't, I, I'm certain there it was not in this life. And people say, Oh, you have a repressed memory. No, it's not a re repressed memory. Um, so overcoming those things that those traumas that happen to us. Uh, and when I say overcoming, I mean like acknowledging and dealing with it. And then how do you do that? And the way that I'd use is the emotional freedom technique tapping. It works great, especially like war guys, PTSD and things like that. So anyway, um, overcoming finding ways to deal with those traumas is super important, whether it's from a past life or, or not. But anyway, that show is so cool. The ghost inside my child, check it out. It's, it's an older show. Find it on YouTube or I know there's some on YouTube. Anyway. There's scientific evidence, by the way, that you can, that, that your past lives, you know, you know, you um, can actually affect you in your previous life, because just like you have high cholesterol that runs in your family, there are a lot of, a lot of things that happen. The DNA travels to the next generation. And not only is it your health factors affected, but memories and, and traumas from the past also travel with you. The emotions, the previous emotions that the, the last person had, and then it goes to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. And so it's not just, it's not just health factors. We just know the health factors because it's physical. So we see it, we, we know it. But also it's the emotions, the traumas, all those things, you know, the th things we don't see, they also travel. And that scientific evidence is based, you know, if you look back, you'll see that there it's scientifically based. Yeah. A lot of the stuff uh, now people, I think would be really surprised if they Google it and find the research that's been done uh, on stuff like that. It's really amazing in generational healing, like, on my, in my family tree, I know on both sides, I have addiction on both sides. Mm -hmm. And so it's no surprise that showed up in me. And, um, but I can stop it now. Like right. I have two, I have two young boys, but it's called generational healing. Like, like I can stop it from going any further with me, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why another, one of the other reasons why I feel so strongly about it is because of my two boys, like, Oh my God, I would not w wish for anything that my boys would go through anything like what I've gone through. Right. And, um, so I want to heal it. Uh, it is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. But like I was saying, one of the best, in my opinion, one of the best ways to do it is through identity. 
Yes. Now for people who want to maybe start and they want to, they want to get out of this. They want it. They want to be a new person. They want a new identity. They want to be, they, they, they see in their head, you know, someone that they, they, they wish they could be, or maybe they see a mentor that, wow, I wish I could be like that person. But like you said, it's a process because anyone that's gone through stuff has low self-esteem, has low self-worth, you know, and you have to build up that before you could get to, to the, the point where you, you actually want to reach that new identity because most people don't even think they can they don't think they're worthy so what are some what are some steps that you can maybe share with people that they could start you know before you know before they get the coach maybe some exercises some things at home they could do and then maybe reach out to someone like you to help them with the heavier stuff yeah it's really two it's really two things it's one one is the new the new identity and then the other is uh, facing whatever traumas, challenges that you had or you, you currently have. So on the exciting part of it, uh, depending on where your mindset is, um, you could possibly right off the bat just say, for example, you you brought up someone you, you admire. Let, let's, let's say, I don't know, let's say, someone really admires Steven Spielberg, like mm -hmm. and generally like, man, that would be awesome to be a director. But I was like, I don't know anything about directing and, and anything like that. Well, maybe that's a, you know, maybe that's a good place to start. Like, what do you, what are the characteristics, qualities, traits of Steven Spielberg that you could adopt? You know, yes. like, and there's a movie, I have not watched it. There is a, a movie about him, mm -hmm. uh, about his childhood and that, and how he became a director. And so you watch that movie and you see the traits, the qualities, values that he has. And like, oh, what are some of those? So you take some of those characteristics, qualities. I don't know. I'm just, he's a very creative. He's a very creative person. So creativity. Oh, but I'm not very creative. I, you know, I never did well in art or whatever. Doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. So you decide on who is, who is it that you want to be? And I, the way I like to start, and all the guys love this, is by coming up with their superpower, their superhero name. If you were mm -hmm. a superhero, what would your <laughs> name be? Or, you know, your higher self name, your best self name, your Christed name, your golden Buddha name. And start start there. Just come up with what that name is. Yeah. Uh, on the last episode, I I called you super. Uh, I, I What did I call you? I forgot. Uh, I forgot super Stacy, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's what it was. But but so like you come up with the name Super Stacy. Then um, what are just a couple of the characteristics qualities that you would like her to be? So she wants to be a, a movie director, and Steven Spielberg is really creative. So you you start to make a list of the characteristics and qualities and values of that person. Right. And once you, and it doesn't have like start small, just make a small, this is my name. And these are some of the characteristics of that person. And fast forward, like if you were creating a character in a play and mm -hmm. you had to develop the character on paper before anybody could act it out, you have to, what type of person is this? Is this a, is it a man or is it a woman? Is, are they, right old or young are they mean or nice like what type of person is this person yeah what do they do for a living well this one is a movie director and um then once you have that that part written the next step is to act it you know what is it william shakespeare that said all the world is a stage i think so that's the world is a stage and you will then start acting differently. What would super Stacy do in this situation? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you start to literally act the part. So, so method acting. Right. Um, I told my wife a long time ago, I said, you know, I think in a different life, I could have been an actor because <laughs> <laughs> I love like yes my kids I love doing voices and characters and stuff like that it can be really goofy 
And, uh, but yeah, to, to literally method act that character out. And now you don't have to tell a soul that you're doing this. You don't have to tell people that you're, your, 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 your superhero name, but to literally to act the part. Right. I like that. Yeah. So it's to answer your question simply on the, on the positive end to simply come up with what's your power name, what's your superhero name, Christed name, whatever you want to call it. Then just come up with some characteristics of that person. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, think about how would that person act, what would that person do, and pick a. Another thing you can do is pick a specific time where you're going to be that person. Right. Example, I had a client mm -hmm. who was nervous about this Zoom meeting that he was going to have with mm -hmm. his boss and his boss's boss, and he was really nervous about it. And I said, um. Am I giving, I'm trying to think if I would be giving any anonymity by sharing his power name. I don't think I would. I think he, so. Um, let me think this through here. He, well, I don't know if I should share his power name, but anyway, he. Uh, I said, I'll just, I'll just say it's Superman. I'll make it up as Superman. That's not his power name, but. Um, yeah. So I told him. Let's specifically have you act as Superman in this Zoom meeting. I'm not talking about all day, not just in that moment, but we have to have right. something that's going to re, that's going to click for you. Yeah. That, but when to turn it on? And I said, and he said, well, how about when I open the Zoom meeting? That will be. So that was his when he opened the Zoom meeting. To join the meeting, bam, bam, he turned into Superman. And when I talked to him the next time after that, he said the meeting went great. He showed up as Superman. So you need to start small. Like if you just say, I'm going to be Superman all the time. Well, it it doesn't quite work that easy. So just yeah. take some time to be that person. Right. And what are some, some of the benefits of working with a coach, you know, because you could start, you know, first by creating that identity of the person you would love to be, and then thinking about the characteristics, and then maybe trying to, you know, trying to develop those character characteristics on your own. But now with a coach, you know, the coach is going to take you through that traumatic, yeah. you know, era, like we talked about. Yeah. And then the, what does the coach do next? Well, th there's a so there's a lot to this. Uh, one of the things that the coach is going to do that I would do is first address the traumas before we did any of that type of work. But on the other flip side, though, what a coach, what I would do is to literally tap in the new you. So, I mean, mm -hmm. there's many different ways to do this. Um, and that's the way I like to do it. I use the emotional freedom technique tapping to literally do a positive tap to tap in the new you. And that's what we did. That client, we specifically did that on the call. Okay. So who's asking like, who's going to be on the call? What are you nervous about? And so then we went in and we started tapping together and mm -hmm. we tapped through that situation and we tapped um, and he has, I have the clients come up with what's called their superpowers. Those aren't just characteristics or qualities. These are the things they're really good at. And yeah. uh, usually it's something that they're really poor at normally. Like for example, it's this one guy was a compulsive liar. Mm -hmm. So his superhero, I mean, his super power was being honest. Yes. And so um, anyway, we tapped in those characteristics, those qualities into him uh so that's one of the many ways a coach would help and uh but like i said to start you can do you can start um but it really to do this in a real success successful way you need help you know you, a person right. needs i had help doing it extensively so 
Yeah, I definitely believe that you need you need help. It's very hard when you're going through these type of struggles to do it on your own. It's almost virtually everybody needs a coach. Everybody, you know, everybody needs a coach. You know, you need someone to help you, guide you, make sure you stay on track, you know. And if you don't know what to do, and a lot of times in the beginning, people are kind of lost. They're not sure how to, where to start, how to keep on track, you know, what's the next step. You know, that's where the coach comes in and they just guide you little by little by little by little by little. And they get you to that point where eventually you will see a new person, a new you, a new a, a new identity. And when you'll start to think differently, you'll start to feel differently, you'll start to approach situations differently, you'll start to approach urges differently because you'll have all these tools and all these techniques that you didn't have before and you'll know when to implement them at the right times. So it's, it's so important. Now, you wrote a book called Think Big. Now, what is that book about? Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, so um, I... It's a co-authored book, and I mentioned we we went into this in the last episode about uh, Brian Tracy. He's a, a, a speaker, uh, trainer, coach, and um, so I had actually when I was a young man, I actually worked for an organization I uh, with Brian Tracy, and so Brian Tracy. This is crazy, right? I have there's my still wait. How's it in the book? Um, there's my story and then Brian Tracy's stories after mine. I'm like, what? <laughs> so anyway, um, so yeah, the, the book Think Big, it's uh, different. There's athletes to entrepreneurs to real estate people in the book. Uh, it's kind of like a chicken soup for the soul type of book. Mm -hmm. but just for, like, like business wise, though, you know, it's not like yeah. touchy feely book. Um, so anyway, my, my story's in there. It's a number one Amazon bestseller. I'm thrilled to be, um, that it's doing so well. And, um, mm -hmm. I, I, if you would like a free copy, a digital copy of it, just drop me an email at eric at powerful eric.com mention the podcast mm -hmm. the advisor, and I will send you one for free. That's amazing. You know, I, I think what you're doing is great. Uh, you know, I think I think people really need help. Um, you know, there's so many people addicted to so many different things. And, you know, porn addiction and sex addiction is something that's so prevalent in our society. And people don't even realize it because it's one of those topics that people try to keep underneath the sheets. They don't, you know, <laughs> that's a great uh, analogy underneath the sheets. But anyway, <laughs> you know, you know, it's something that people try to keep quiet. They don't talk about, you know, but it, it is very prevalent in our society. And, you know, it, it's it's something that needs to be, you know, fixed and it needs people need help and people know that they need help because a lot of times it hurts marriages, it hurts relationships, you know, it, it you know, it changes people. People don't look at other people the same, you know, the same way the people show lack of respect. There's so many different things that go on, you know, and, um, you know, you, you need need help, you know, and, and if, if you're addicted to porn, if you're addicted to sex and you know, you have a problem because, you know, you need to really go get help. I knew one woman that she had gotten a, um, a virus and at, the virus went to her brain and it triggered something. And right after it triggered something, she noticed that she became addicted to sex. And so it was the virus that did something to the brain that triggered it, but she was able to get the help and the therapy to get herself back to the point where that she was able to break that addiction. So anything is possible, you know, even if you get a virus and it triggers something in your brain, you know, with the right help and, and, and the right care, you could get back to the way you were, you know, you don't have to have, you know, any addiction can be broken with the right help and guidance. And, um, with today's conversation, if you really wanted to emphasize on some important factors, what are some things that you really like to, you know, emphasize to the listeners? Well, one, as far as the uh, addiction aspect, the something that's happening right now in the world, artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is like nuclear power. You can you can harness that energy and power an entire city, or you can use that energy and destroy an entire city. Right. And artificial intelligence 
um, it's bringing some huge negative uh, challenges for God, people that are addicted to porn because um, the things that you can do now with artificial intelligence and pornography are very disturbing. Um, I don't want to get too many details about it uh, because one of the things that I got ideas when I was going to these 12 step meetings and I'm like, Oh, I didn't know that was out there. Oh, I'm going to try that. So, but if someone is listening to this and they're addicted to porn, get out now because it's going to get stronger and more powerful and the matrix, you are going to literally like be in the matrix. And if you, it's going to get to a point where you're not going to get out. Um, right. And uh, well, just for example, you know, the VR stuff is just, that's just the beginning. Um, it's, they're already working on putting in your noodle uh, directly. And um, there's a movie, uh, an old movie with Natalie Wood and Christopher Walken called, called Brainstorm. It's a odd movie. And uh, I love that movie. It's really eclectic, strange movie. And uh in the movie, Christopher Walken is a scientist and he discovers how to record reality and then you're able to play it back to someone else. And uh, that is coming. Yeah, I, that's probably a ways off. But my point is, with technologies just feeling stronger, more powerful, with artificial intelligence is, is going to change the entire world. Um, and then there, in an interview with a guy that is one of the top you know, thinkers of the world. I don't remember who he was, but he, they said they're asking him about artificial intelligence. And he said, people are equating this to the birth of the internet. Like there's that mm -hmm. power. And he said, no, no, no. You should equate this to the discovery of fire. Yeah. So what I'm saying is if you are addicted, get out now because it's going to get a lot stronger, a lot more powerful. So that's on the negative side. Um, kind of lost my train of thought. What were you asking me? <laughs> no, I was, I was just asking you to emphasize on a, a couple of important factors that you, you want to leave the listeners with. Okay. So the important factor, the positive side, the positive side is that you can absolutely turn it around. Um, I help guys every day. I, to be honest, I had this one guy who was really bad. Like, his, uh, he went out into the real world and was with hundreds of prostitutes and all this stuff. And to be real honest, I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is super severe. I don't know if I'll be able to help them. I was able to help him. I was, and, mm -hmm. and his wife, they actually stayed together. I'm so proud of that. Anyway, my point of telling you that is not to impress you, just to say there is hope. You can yeah. turn it around. You can absolutely change. You can be a very, very severe case and you can change around, turn it around. You can stop identifying as the addict. Now you mm -hmm. do recognize that well, maybe I am an addict to this, but to stop just identifying as the addict and start identifying as powerful whoever and start taking steps to become that person. Right. Uh, take steps to become that person. Many habits, micro goals. I always ask my clients, what is one small, seemingly insignificant step that you could take? Mm -hmm. Like that's even maybe smaller than a baby step. What is one small, seemingly insignificant step that you could take? There's always something that you can do. There's always something that you can do to better whatever situation you're in. 100%. That's so true. Now, can you tell everybody about the services that you provide and where they can find you? Absolutely. Just go to PowerfulEric.com and the services. I So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do group coaching. I have uh, an online program. I've got a community. And uh, the best thing to do if you want to know more um, is people... 
just ask, well, tell me about this or tell me about that. The, the, the best thing I need to know your specific situation. Like people are like, well, how much does it cost? Well, I don't know. Like, what do you need? Like, where are you at? And you're, you know, where, I don't know. Like, I need to talk to you and find right. out where you're at and see what, what program would be the best fit for you. Yeah. Uh, and I tell you, I got a lot of wives that are the ones that find, find me because mm -hmm. usually when somebody comes to me, in fact, I've got a call here just in, uh, at two hours. Yeah. In two hours, a new client, and this is the typical situation. The wife found out about it. Um, in this particular situation, it was not just porn. It was also cheating. And mm -hmm. uh, she's like done with him. She wants to get a divorce, but they're not divorced yet. And they're still together. And so right. he's, this is a last ditch hope. It's like, yeah. Eric, help me. Oh, I'm sinking, you know, and um, so I have to reassure them that um, this is not easy, but right. you can absolutely do it. Like I tell about the super severe case, like if that guy can do it, if I can do it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's make a train of thought again. <laughs> if I could do it and you can do it, you know, anybody could do it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, if I'd be, uh, and, and also, you know, I, I know researched and was a part of all these different recovery programs and that all the, I know the things that don't work. I know the things that do work. And I, to be honest, I feel really, uh, bad for the people that decide to like go the traditional route or whatever. So right. Like, dude, like I know that road and I saw the hundreds of guys go through those programs and it's it's painful so yeah i would love to talk to either the wife or the husband or both i prefer to talk to them both if it's somebody something that somebody's considering doing and i have assistance for the wife as well right that's you know i i think what you're doing is great i think i think it's needed in our society and I just want to say thank you today because you you really touched a lot of important factors today. I think it's really important to understand that a new identity is important, but there are a lot of steps that we have to take before we get to that new identity. But creating something in our head and hoping for that possibility of maybe one day reaching that new identity is 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 a good motivator. But the, you know, in order to get there, there's a lot of little steps that you have to take. But with the help and guidance of somebody who's been through it, understands it, has experience in the field and knows methods that work, people could actually get help, get the, break the addictions and actually move on to having a life that's healthy, productive and fulfilling. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Well, this has been a great podcast and I really want to say thank you and tell everybody before we go one more time, what your website is. We're going to put it in the description anyway, but just let them know. Go to powerfuleric.com. There you go. Oh, I love you, Eric. You're a great guy. Have a great day today. Thank you so thank much you. for being on the show. My pleasure. Thanks. You have a, oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye.